Welcome to the Baynet's Countdown to November, a series of interviews with the candidates in the November 4th election. I'm Marty Madden, and with me for this segment is Calvert County Commissioner Evan Slagenhop. Uh, he's a Republican. He's uh, completing his first term as commissioner, seeking a second term. And uh, his opponent is Democrat Kelly McConkey. Uh, Evan, nice to have you Thanks, uh, with us before our camera today. Uh, turn this thing down. Tell us why you've chosen to run again for county commissioner. Sure. Frankly, Marty, it's um, after the first term, there's, there's always a learning curve at first. Uh, you, you get to a point where you really know what you can do, what you can't do. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm looking forward to a second term to actually being able to, to implement and, and make some improvements that I was trying to make during the first term. Mm -hmm. um, how would you assess your first term? First year was a learning curve. I was very comfortable coming up to speed, I thought. Um, as a board, we really were very much just sustaining the economic downturn. We didn't really do a lot other than just hold on, sustain, um, didn't break anything. Uh, I think we were very fortunate when the Dominion uh, proposal opportunity came forward because I think that's something that will help the citizens all in the long term. And uh, lastly, uh, I feel very comfortable, most, most comfortable about the experience we had with the Howling Point Trailer Park. And so I'm, I look back and go, okay, it was, it was a good first term. Mm -hmm. And that you really got um, very involved in that uh, trailer park. Uh, I, I issue. did. Uh, what, was that something that was thrust upon you or did? What, I'll try to make it a short story, but what happened was I was at a, a meeting in Lusby and I was getting these text messages from a friend telling me there were problems at a trailer park and I didn't have a lot of detail. And as that meeting was ending, it was a Sunday, remember that bitter cold January. Oh, yeah. As I was driving home then, uh, that friend and I talked on the phone and she was conveying some of the things her daughter was hearing. I got home, talked to my wife and said, you know, something has to happen here. And then we received another call from a, a teacher. So I headed down to the trailer park on the way, had our county administrator meet me there. And once we were on site, it became evident the conditions were deplorable and, and, and we had to do something. So uh, that evening and then the next day, all the plans were put together. And then the public found out about it on Tuesday when we authorized the staff to, to go and, and, and basically perform a rescue mission and begin that effort. And that's not something you anticipate. That's just No, no, that's one of the things, you know, anytime somebody runs for office, you always have the plans. But what really defined you are events as events happen that you're not aware of. That's, that's where your challenges will come. Okay. Well, in the next four years, what uh, issues do you believe the next board is gonna have to address? I think the biggest issue we have to address is being able to sustain um, same level of services and functions at a continually reduced tax rate, rate a tax base, uh, because the revenue income projections are not going up, they remain very flat. Expenses still continue. And until funds start showing up from Dominion or otherwise the economy turns around, and I don't see any magic rabbit coming out of a hat to show the economy is going to turn around soon, it's going to be a very big challenge just to be able to get us to that point where we can probably start turning the corner. Um, and what are your budget priorities? Besides the obvious public safety and education, which comprises the bulk of mm -hmm. what we do, our previous board has tried to always continue everything. So the best answer I can give on that is I think we really need to prioritize all the services and functions mm -hmm. and then actually prioritize those with the public involvement or understanding so that if we have to make some cuts, we actually consider having to cut some services or functions. When I say cut, I'm referring to potentially mothballing some things temporarily mm -hmm. that we do, or perhaps looking at other ways such as privatizing some things or, um, or actually maybe having to make some real hard cuts. It, it's a very serious budget projection right now. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk about maybe uh, privatizing, would the uh, 
the county's indoor pool will be one of those facilities or the golf course? I'm glad you mentioned those two. Not necessarily so much privatized. That's a decision that would have to be made whether you privatize anything or not. But I think those two facilities actually need to be pulled out of parks and recreations and, and be run very much like a business other than being run as though it's another park uh, facility. Mm -hmm. So I think we have some room for some improvements there too. Okay. Um, the buzzword in government these days is transparency. Right. right. Um, and I know that that's uh, been uh, something of a, uh, a quest for you during this first yeah. term. Have we made any progress? What do we still need to do? We still have more to do. We have made progress. I want to cite that after the first three years, I was so frustrated with the way we were building our budget. And, and, and given that you don't make any headway if you're always the only person opposing something, we did find something that all commissioners agreed upon, and we did that this past full year, the entire budget build. Every meeting the staff had on the budget with the Board of Commissioners was on tele television. It was recorded and aired. It was on the, our website, internet. And and the public could see the same time we were seeing the same data that we were seeing. So anybody that wanted to know how we build the budget, just reviewing all those various budget meetings, you will see the exactly the same level of detail we see as a board when we saw it. And so I would say uh, citizens are welcomed when, when that, is, that information comes available and then is on the air. They're welcome to provide input then. So I think it was a big, big step forward in transparency. More to go, of course. Right. Um, now, I'm going to take a wild guess and say you believe Maryland's jurisdictions are being uh, handed too many unfunded mandates from the state. And in your opinion, what does Calvert County need to do to assert its own? Right. Good. And, and I know you're saying that part because you've watched me often make comments and try to push back on the state about various unfunded mandates. And rather than go to the whole list of things, and there's quite a few, the one approach I took was to be as active as I can in, in an organization called MACO, Maryland mm -hmm. Association of Counties. And I was involved in, on their legislative committee, and then a year ago was selected by my peers throughout the state to be part of the board of directors of MACO. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, that continuing in that role is a very effective means to help influence the legislation before it becomes an unfunded mandate. Mm -hmm. um, with a huge construction project, the Dominion project, about to get rolling, and there's a potential another one could be very close down the road if Calvert Cliffs mm -hmm. 3 gets um, uh, re uh, more traction. Right. Um, are you prepared for a lot of citizen inquiries, uh, concerns, and feedback about Absolutely. what the and, project's Absolutely, and you have to be prepared for that. Um, y you know, we have the public trust. People elect us to, to make decisions. And there are certain issues for which the law prescribes we have to meet in executive session. So there are some things we just cannot talk about. Mm -hmm. And we have to respect that responsibility. But at the same time, we certainly can receive input from any citizen on any topics. Um, the likelihood of the, the third reactor at Calvert Cliffs nuclear plant um, would, would be a wonderful addition to the tax base should that pan out over time. Um, additionally, you know, we're, we've been pushing to try to get some additional economic development in Prince Frederick itself. There's a project called Armory Square that we're working on too. So I, I could see that in the upcoming years some of those kinds of uh, items could come forward and we could find up with something, uh, find a surprise in our lap, uh, actually having some additional development in the Patuxent Business Park, which hasn't really panned out yet. So any number of things are possible in the upcoming few years. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going to be able to handle the uh, all the uh, dust and uh, inconvenience, you think? I, I believe so. Of course, anytime you have any construction, there is dust, and if it rains, there's mud. Um, but you do notice that that all those construction sites have to have stormwater management in places. They have to put retention walls up such that a lot of that uh, debris that, that gets created is managed and, and doesn't become a, a real mess. Mm -hmm. Of all the uh, things you do as county commissioner, what's the thing you enjoy the most? Oh, uh, 
I think the thing I enjoy the most is actually uh, responding as quickly as possible when we get various emails or phone calls. Um, I think citizens' expectations on hearing back has really elevated with technology. Uh, we all have iPads from the county so we can respond very quickly. Mm -hmm. Previously, citizens probably could wait two weeks before they hear a response from when they send something. Now, they're really anticipating hearing almost instantaneously. So I, I enjoy that immediate interaction with the public the most. Okay. Well, Evan, good luck to you in Thank the, you. our November 4th election. Thanks for coming by and being sure. on camera with us. And we thank the audience out there for watching this segment of Countdown to November. I'm Marty Matt. Back.